would like to offer our unlimited Dandava pranams at the lotus feet of our beloved Srila Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas. Only by their mercy can we even try to do some service. Srila Gurudev has many times explained the verse written by our Srila Rupa Goswami God, Anya Vilasita Sunyam, Jnana Karma Jana Vidam, Anukul Yena Krishnanu, Shilanam Bhakti Vidama. The cultivation of activities which are meant exclusively for the pleasure of Sri Krishna, that are not covered by Jnana, knowledge aimed at impersonal liberation, and karma, reward seeking activity, and which is devoid of all desires other than the aspiration to bring happiness to Sri Krishna is called Uttam Bhakti, pure devotional service. We hope that this drama can express a little what is the meaning of this verse. We are very foolish, so please excuse our mistakes and accept our Krishpanjali at your lotus feet. The pastimes of Lord Ramachandra are endless. Even Anantashesh himself continuously sings the glories of Sri Ram, but even with unlimited mouths, he is unable to touch the end in any way. We are praying that these infinite pastimes and teachings may appear in our hearts. One day, when Lord Ramachandra was a small boy, he was playing in the lap of Maharani Kaikeyi. Kaikeyi's love for him was so great. Indeed, she loved him even more than her own son, Bharat and Ram was also very attached to Kaikeyi. Mother, do you love me? Of course I love you. Well, I have something to ask you. It is very important. Only you can give it to me. Anything, my Ram. You will have to sacrifice everything. Do you promise? Oh, Ram, you are my heart and soul. I would give you anything. When I grow up and return home after my marriage, my father will think of giving this palace to me. But I want you to ask him to give the palace to Bharat and banish me to the forest for 14 years. No! No, I cannot do something so cruel! Well, you promised. If you do not fulfill my request, everything will be ruined. All the so Everybody, all the demigods have been waiting for me to destroy these demons. These demons are all there. No, I cannot do this. For the benefit of the whole world, you will have to do no. this. And thus, the great epic of the Ramayana begins. Just see the love of Kaikeyi. She would be hated by the universe. Her son, Bharat, would reject her and would never call her mother again. She sacrificed everything to fulfill the desire of her wrong. Some years later, Kaikeyi fulfilled her promise. The two brothers, Bharat and Satrugna, had gone to their maternal uncle's palace. And upon returning to Ayodhya, they noticed that all was silent. Usually the city was cheerful, and so many activities were joyfully taking place. But now, it was like a lady whose husband is dead, and who wears no decorations or ornaments. Seeing these and other inauspicious omens, Bharat and Satrugna became fearful. When they entered the royal palace and went to Kaikeyi's chamber, they were stunned to hear how Bharat had been banished to the forest for 14 years. And Bharat was to be crowned king. And in Ram's absence, their father had died of a broken heart. When Bharat heard this and the reason for it, he became completely inimical towards his mother. With great lamentation, he fell at the feet of his Gurudev, Vasishta Rishi, and the royal assembly. Oh, who is such a sinner as I, on whose account Ram, Lakshman, and Sita have been exiled to the forest? The 
king. My father ascended to heaven the moment Rom departed. Oh, how wretched am I. I am hearing everything, and yet I still remain alive. Oh, there are no words to describe the cruelty and the hardness of my heart. Clinging to this body, born of Kaike, this desolate life is exceedingly unfortunate. <laughs> my dear child Barrett, one is powerless against providence. Loss and gain, life and death, glory and infamy, all these lie in the hands of the Supreme. Trying to argue whom we should blame and with whom we should be angry is a waste of good intelligence. Do not lament for your father. There was nor shall there ever be a monarch like King Dasarath. Who can glorify him, my dear child? Who begot such virtuous sons such as Ram, Lakshman, Satrugan, and yourself? Please, reverently obey the king's command. The king has bestowed the kingship upon you, and it is your duty to uphold the words of your father. Bharat, take up the throne of Ayodhya. Cease to grieve, my child, and obey the Guru's order. This life, everything is so uncertain. My son Ram is in the forest, and the great king, my husband, is in heaven. This is not a time to be faint of heart. You are the only support of your family, as well as the citizens of Ayodhya. Have courage. Reverently obey your guru's order. Cherish your subjects and relieve the suffering of your family. <coughs> Mother Koshalya and my Gurudev have given me excellent advice. It has been endorsed by all present and has even been ordered by that so-called mother. I know that everyone should take the advice of one's preceptors, parents and elders and act upon them with a cheerful heart. Even though I fully realize this, my heart is not satisfied. My heart beats only for the service of Ram. I have been deprived of that privilege by the perversity of Maharani Kaike. Of what value is a kingdom? If the lotus feet of Ram are not to be seen, it is only an abode of sorrow. An abundance of enjoyments are of no use to a diseased body. Similarly, what is the point of my life without Ram, the lord of the Rams? Bowing my head to all, I lay my terrible distress before you. If I cannot see the feet of my beloved Ram, this agony of my soul will never leave. I can think of only one remedy. There is one resolve in my mind. At daybreak, I must proceed to meet my Ram and bring him back to Ayodhya to rule as king. Therefore, with your blessings, Please allow me to depart. My child, I see that you are the embodiment of love for Ram. 
Any man who criticizes you out of ignorance because of your mother's misdoings will certainly be sent to the hellish planets, along with millions of his past generations. Oh, Bart, you have thought out a good plan. By all means, let us all proceed to the forest. You've held a hand out to us while we were drowning in an ocean of grief. Yes, we shall all go to the forest and beg Rom to return. Bart's decision, longing to see the moonlike face of their beloved Rom, they decided to also go with Bart and bring their lord back to the kingdom. In the morning, the chief of sages, Vasishta Rishi, was the first to mount his chariot and lead the way. Hosts of pious Brahmins then followed. The people of the city followed next, and together, they all left for the forest of Chitrakoot. Leaving the city in the charge of faithful servants and respectfully sending the whole party ahead, the two brothers, Parat and Satrugna, started last of all remembering the feet of Sri Ram Chandra. Meanwhile, in the forest of Chitrakoot, Ram, Sita, and Lakshman were living very peacefully and happily. As Bharat and his party grew closer, Sri Ramchandra saw the dust in the air and the birds and beasts flying away in panic. He saw this and wondered in his heart what could be the reason. Lakshman climbed a tree and saw Bharat approaching with so many elephants and chariots. Misunderstanding Bharat's intention, he was filled with anger. Where's my bow? He's quickly approaching. Lakshman, why are you so angry? Who has come? It's Bharat and a vast army. If he thinks he can catch us off guard, he will surely be disappointed. Quickly, brother, grab your weapons. Let us not delay. Bard has come, but this is happy news. Why would we want to fight with our dear brother? My Lord, you are trusting by nature and our storehouse of love and affection. You have faith in everyone and see all to be just like yourself. Fools given to the pleasures of the senses are seized with the lust for attaining power. Bharat was righteous, good, and wise. But now that he has attained your position as the ruler of Ayodhya, even he has transgressed the boundaries of righteousness. Finding an adverse situation and knowing that you are alone in the forest, our brother has plotted against you. He has come to make his kingdom secure. Let me distinguish myself as your servant today, and I will teach Bart a good lesson in battle. I am a Chatriya, born in the race of the Raghu. Therefore, how can I tolerate such an insult? I shall easily defeat Bart, as well as his younger brother, Satrugna. Lakshman, think about what you are saying. No great significant deed should be performed rashly and without reflection. Just remember the story of the woman and the mongoose. While the mongoose was guarding the woman's child, a snake came, and the mongoose killed that snake, thus saving the child's life. But when the woman saw the blood on the mongoose's face, she thought it was her child and immediately killed that mongoose. Do not make the same mistake. If one rushes into action, he will repent later. I have no doubt in your courage and strength. Certainly you can kill Bharat in the heat of anger. But when you learn that your suspicions were false, can you then bring him back to life? It is true 
that after tasting kingly, ma kingly power, most men become intoxicated and go mad. But my dear brother Lakshman, I swear by you, as well as by our father, that there is no one as good and innocent as Bharat. Darkness may swallow the midday sun. The earth may abandon its natural forbearance. And not Meru may be blown away by a puff of wind. But Bharat can never give up his love for me. Bharat and Satrugna left the large party and went ahead. Guided by the Nishada chief Guha, they grew close to Ram's cottage. Overflowing with affection and tears flowing from their eyes, the two brothers came upon Ram's footprints. After placing the dust that had touched the Lord's lotus feet upon their heads and hearts, they applied it to their eyes and experienced the same degree of joy as they would on seeing Ram himself. Observing Bard's condition, the beasts and birds, and even inanimate creatures, were overwhelmed with emotion. Finally, the brothers arrived at the hermitage. On seeing the Lord of their life, they fell at his feet. Oh, buddy, I 